Was there great rivalry between Kenneth and Sir Fred? Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, rivalry is everywhere. We wouldn't get anywhere if there wasn't any rivalry. It's among the dancers and among the choreographers, among the staff. It's everywhere. We're all rivals. We wouldn't derive if we weren't. I mean, if you go and watch the Olympics, they're all rivals, aren't they? Healthy don't competition. mean anything. Competition, you must have it. And they soon forget it at a party. I've watched them all. I didn't feel close to him anymore. Um, and I would go to him at, for advice, and he would be very non-committal. And finally, I got this offer to go to Berlin, and I went to him and I said, you know, I've been asked to go and be director of Berlin. What do you think? Hoping he would say, don't go. But he didn't. He said, go. So I did. In June 1966, Macmillan went to Berlin to direct the ballet company at the Deutsche Oper. Among others he took with him from the Royal was, naturally, Lynn Seymour. We had gone there as a result of feeling that our artistic aspirations had been sort of outraged by boardroom, opera house, sort of politics. Macmillan's three years in Berlin were not happy ones. Berlin was horrible. The, the audience loved to boo. I mean, they booed everything I ever did there. I think they booed everything. They still do. I was very unhappy in Berlin. The wall was very much in evidence then. It was very restrictive. I had no German. I was very lonely. Um, I didn't like it at all. I started drinking a lot, um, which led to actually a breakdown in my health. I mean, I became an alcoholic, really. And how did you crack that? By becoming ill and the hospital saying to me, if you don't give up drinking, you're going to die pretty soon. So I had no alternative. I didn't want to die. Macmillan returned to Covent Garden as director of the Royal Ballet in 1970, when Sir Frederick Ashton retired. But it was not the return of the prodigal. I wasn't welcome at all. Uh, Ashton had been a great, great favorite with everyone and he'd gone. Um, and I think everybody missed him, and I think everyone was very suspicious about what I was going to do with the Royal Ballet. I think they thought I was out to destroy it, really. But I wasn't. The first new ballet he gave the company was a full-length Anastasia. It was based on the true story of a woman in a Berlin clinic who believed she was the sole survivor of the Russian royal family murdered by the Bolsheviks. He loved dealing with subjects that were, could be related in a contemporary way. Um, and exploring that aspect, but just with a little cover of maybe 50 years or 100 years or, you know, not too long, but always something that could be related to life now. And certainly it's more private and darker aspects. But Anastasia got bad notices. It was the first time that I'd, I had received such unanimous hostility. I think really uh, the only uh, critic that liked, two critics that liked the ballet wrote for the Financial Times. I think every other paper in England hated the ballet. I can't think why actually now, except it was very un-Ashtonian. There is a basic conservatism, almost a complacency about a certain, as certain parts of the public who don't want it to be anything than as it was. They know what they like, they like what they know, and please don't rock the boat. Please don't bring in any of these unfortunate people who are the sort of people in the world today. Why should ballet be a 20th century art when it's so happily a 19th century art? I think the decline of the Royal Ballet as a creative and artistic force can pretty much be dated uh, from, probably from Anastasia. Anastasia was actually a huge vehicle for a great classical company, a classical company that was also filled with fine actors. And it had one supreme starring role for a great ballerina. Now, I had a real breakdown over, th over that. And, um, I mean, I was, so I was, I didn't really work for, for about three months after that. I lost confidence completely. How did you, in fact, pull yourself out of it and, fa and face a company again? Well, I found the right psychiatrist to help me. I also found my wife at that time, which was an, 
you know, wonderful for me. Um, she was a great help. Deborah Macmillan is an artist and painted this portrait in oils of the choreographer she married. The first time I felt I'd found part of my identity was when I very did my very first ballet. The second part of my identity happened when I met Deborah and had Charlotte. So that made me complete, really. It gave me a tremendous sense of security. And, I mean, she made me see that, really, the press didn't really matter at all, which I don't think it does now. I mean, I did then. I had to go to America with the company, and she came with me. And I was greeted with great hostility there, because um, Ashton had just left, and they saw me as a figure that might be out to destroy the Royal Ballet. Well, that was a terrible tour, because there were people planted at the stage door shouting, Ashton, 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 every time Kenneth came out of the stage door. And there was also a very deranged woman, I remember, who used to lie and wait for us at the hotel and follow us around New York making vomiting, vomiting noises noise. about four paces behind us. So um, at that point, I thought, this world is insane. <laughs> <laughs> In the American critical lexicon, Ashton was a genius and Macmillan was something considerably less. And there was a feeling that Ashton was being pushed out of the repertory by a certain upstart uh, Macmillan. One particular incident at New York's Metropolitan Opera House sticks in the Macmillan's mind. That was over the Sleeping Beauty. It wasn't my production. It was a production that was done by Ashton and Peter Wright. And there was one particular section in the last act which had been omitted, which the New York public were used to seeing. And I got to New York and I went to some restaurant with Deborah and a lot of people came up to me and said, listen, if you don't put the coda back tonight, you've had it. And of course, I mean, I couldn't touch the production at all. It wasn't mine. And it was the last night of the season and it was Rudolph and Margot, who were huge stars, and I had to go on the stage as director and I walked onto the stage and the whole audience rushed forward booing me. And it wasn't even my production. And somebody associated with the front of house staff came up and said, don't worry, sir, we've got a bodyguarded exit lined up for, through a secret door. So um, when you've done your call, follow me. And so we nipped out of a side door. It was escorted. It was completely by, by a bodyguard with a gun. For 18 years now, Deborah has been in at the start of Macmillan's creative process. That's it. Yeah.